So, uh, my name is Rishti Khemka. I work with an organization called AR Campus Solutions and we run a brand called Mindbox, uh, which is primarily focused on schools education and we have really taken gaming as an area where how can games foster learning and how can kids actually learn the contextual part of learning what they get in schools by the help of games. So, uh, so that's going to be my talk about uh, creating new generation of game developers. And I just wanted to put up a couple of slides uh, about things which you may already know. Uh, this is our, uh, from what I got in, in a recent report, our contribution to the world in terms of revenue. And uh, the way I see it is it's a huge positive with uh, the amount of people that we have. And this can only go up. And when I look at the the population that we have, uh, we have nearly 50% of India's population which is under 25 and out of that we have nearly 39% which is actually students and out of that uh, we have, which is about I think 472 million odd people and out of that we have nearly 250 plus million students which are actually studying in schools and that's the market we are addressing. Uh, again, there's a huge growth expected uh, in there. So, uh, why did we choose games in education? So, how we work with schools is we make, we have developed a curriculum which becomes part of the school curriculum. And our teachers actually go inside the school and deliver this day in, day out. So, why did we choose games? Because if you see games and if you see the analogy how we play games, uh, I see it pretty similar to the scientific methods, how we do innovation. So what happens in a game is you would take, uh, you already would see a problem or you want to overcome something. You would make a hypothesis on how you want to overcome that and you would then test that hypothesis, which is what we call game. And then what happens is you would either succeed or you would fail. And once you fail, you learn from that, you get better and you keep trying again till you succeed. And that's how gaming works. And that's the same way how any innovation happens. You make, a, you know, you have a problem that you want to solve. You have a hypothesis that you make. You test that, and you uh, may succeed or you may not. And then you try and you succeed. So we were able to see a very good analogy on these two things, and we felt that this is very important to make kids aware of, of the same. And how can games foster learning? So, if you see our typical education system, and it starts from primary grades, uh, most of the students, and we all went to schools, most of the students that are there, we all start with good grades, or numbers, whatever you may call it. You know, in the early years, everybody gets good grades. You may get an A, you may get a B, I mean, whatever, but they're good. But what happens after that, as you grow into more and more classes, you have to work really hard to stay there, or you go down. I mean, I was one who went down in, in school. I didn't find it interesting. So that's probably the other way how gaming works, and which is why probably us and our children love gaming so much. Because gaming is all about starting at zero. And the only way you can do and the only place you can go is up. So it's actually the reverse on how the schooling works, which takes you here, and gaming, which takes you up. So we said, OK, here is something which kids love. Here is an education system which a lot of kids don't like. They have to do it. Some of them, you know, race through it and maybe after grade 12 don't even remember what they learned in those years. Because probably they didn't have the context of what they were learning. They had only the content. And because they had the content, they had no idea why, why would I learn trigonometry? What is the relevance of trigonometry in the real world? Or is it just for me to pass and get a grade and move to the next, next class. So what we arrived was that, okay, let's connect this dot between education and learning. And that's where we created Mindbox about four years ago. And there in Mindbox, we run a lot of other programs as well. But this is one of the programs which has gained the maximum traction. So our motto as and our why as Mindbox is to empower lives. And here it's about empowering student lives. So how we can lead them better than what, what we found. And we started uh, in a very small beginning with three schools across India. 
and now we have taken it to a, a huge number and this is running in 15 cities uh, in India where we have our own faculties going and delivering programs inside the schools and this probably in the next year is going to probably more than done. So we are still at the tip of the iceberg when we look at a 250 plus million out of which 100 million plus are in private schools and 150 million are in government schools. And this is what we have done. So we call our program Interactive Media Design because gaming is one platform which is interactive. And uh, there are uh, nearly 106 lessons that we have designed and we have nearly reached out to 9,300 out of those 20,000 who have actually understood the whole process of making a game. And in that process, understood a lot about what they're learning in their curriculum of math or science, but also gained a lot of skills. So I'll show you some of the work that uh, you know, uh, as an example, that's what the students have done. Okay, these are 12 year olds. These are, uh, you know, uh, 11 to 12 year olds who have created stuff like this. And uh, our objective for these students is to make them understand the importance of what they are learning and also give them a skill which they could carry if they want to you know, choose gaming as a career for them. So our process is more like a design thinking process that we apply in our schools and that's how we make the curriculum. And it starts with an idea and then you work on that idea on how you design that okay this is what I want as an objective. And then the whole process starts whether there is uh, you know we typically work in uh, groups of three to five. In, in a class and so we would make multiple groups and uh, students would then there would be somebody who would be working on programming there would be somebody who would be working on art there is somebody who's tracking everything so so there are skills that they are working whether it is goal setting whether it is leadership whether it is communication so there are those subtle skills that they are gaining by doing that process which they can even apply in other parts of their life and then we have even uh, put forth uh, certain games which kids have developed on the App Store or on the Google Store. So we even give them recognition that, okay, if you've done something and it's worth, let's take that and give it out to the public. Again, this is sort of the environment that we create inside a school where we are uh, creating a whole, uh, you know, it's like a, where a child walks in and it's not exactly like a typical classroom that you would see inside a school. So uh, the environment itself uses creativity and innovation. That's what we try to, try to create. The next part uh, is, is also about what skills that we want to develop in our children because we know that all the kids that are going through these uh, programs are not going to become game developers. Yes, there would be some who want to become and they would be passionate about it, but there would be some who would go on in their lives choosing alternate careers. So what are the skills that we want them to carry through the game development process that they go through? Or, you know, there would be obviously, you know, you see a lot of these as multitasking or divergent thinking. But even also in terms of the curriculum alignment as I shared is something that, that we focus on. Which is around the fact that, you know, let's look at, uh, like this is an example of the labyrinth. And uh, we have a goal that we set, which would be a project that we do inside the class. And a, ch a child would actually learn maybe Unity or any other tool through that project based learning. And then during the second half of the year, we define an objective and it becomes more of a design-based learning where kids come together, huddle, and they think of things that they want to create, which could be a solution to a problem that they might be looking at around their school or around their community. So there is a curriculum alignment happening, there is skill development happening, there is design thinking happening, and there is tool development happening. And that's all happening at the same time. So we work on more on interdisciplinary learning is what, is what we focus. Just to give you an example, you know, let's, let's take concepts of science. So you have all these different areas which are part of the curriculum that happens inside schools, whether it's a CBSC, whether it's an ICSC, even state board. We run, this, uh, we run this program in state board schools as well. And then we define a goal as a shared, we look at objectives on what all things that we want to achieve to make sure our goal is achieved. And then these are certain skills they focus on, you know, uh, it's about logical reasoning, it's about decision making, okay, this is the way we want to make the game, this is the way we want to design it. Uh, there is obviously analysis of what happens, 
how we can get get this output better and also there is things on you know obviously communication and creativity so we thought okay this is what we are doing that's fine how about giving these kids a platform so that they can express their creativity out so what we created was uh, india's first major you know platform on game development and then we expanded that into a much more broader platform called design championship and uh, i would like to shout out nascom who who supported us in this initiative uh, with rajesh rao and early shruti and now that and then we had uh, them coming as on board as partners and we ran this competition in six cities which we started off in 2014 where we had and all these participants that you see are school people and school kids we even created a primary competition where you had kids from grade 5 come in and develop games so, and uh, we have seen the journey where in 2014 we actually invested in doing 100 plus workshops across india to make kids aware on how to use the tools that they could create again and because that was becoming difficult as the student count was growing we then created an online platform and you go to designchampionship.in and you would see okay if you register there is online learning material that's there and we've seen that this take up take there so actually in 2017 we had 5000 students participate uh, across various categories and the largest was game development which was 2000 and uh, some of the juries might be around here as well who have actually taken out time to come down to even cities like madurai where we did a we did a game uh, uh, this uh, design championship event and they came down there and they were able to see the enthusiasm of the kids and see the games and give them feedback and then we announced the winners so uh, just a little bit of snapshot of of what uh, we have done in in these four years in the design championship this whole process you know you have uh, how it works is we a week before the competition that happens in that city we give a theme and we announce the theme it could be ice and water or rain or you know to be whatever so kids who have applied have actually one week to ideate define and create a full fledged working game which they come on the competition day and they show it to the juries who give them uh, you know rankings on four category categories and then we take the top 10 and then we announce the top 3 and then a special jury match so all these kids have done whatever games you would see and there there is uh, if you go out on the big hall we have the winning teams there so if you really want to see what kids are doing and what they have created they would be very enthusiastic to show you so that process is meant you know giving them a lot more other than just that game they are excited about the game they are excited about winning but it is also so many skills that they are gaining which they can learn and they can carry through life so gaming is actually helping them to make their future a lot better so for us it's it's all about how we can create more and more people who get exposed to this they want to choose gaming as a career they are more than welcome they are getting exposed to that technology well early in life and we hope more and more people come out and create more games and make india a lot lot bigger market you know for for gaming both from a revenue and a game uh, game development standpoint uh, for us the motto is how we can reach and touch half a billion lives by 2050 and that's what we are working on as as an organization so we are not looking at you know we have all the digital we have one year three years no we are working on a plan of 30 plus years okay how we can continue stay invested and focused and take this forward so that we can touch half a billion lives and make them better in some way or form and this is one million that we have found so i would encourage everybody if you have time just go and see what kids are doing 
and give them feedback, give them encouragement, and you will see them really, really getting more excited about it. Thank you so much. I've really made sure I finish in time, and don't stop me for lunch. Thank you.